name is Althea Graney. Welcome back to this edition of the Simsbury View, a show that is designed to go behind the scenes of our town to learn more about what makes it unique. Our focus today is one of Simsbury's treasures, and unfortunately, one of our best kept secrets, the Simsbury Free Library. It is located right in the center of town at 749 Hot Meadow Street and houses the Simsbury Genealogical and Historical Research Library, also known as SGHRL. The Williams Phelps Eno Memorial Center is also there, as well as the Ensign Bigford Archives. Let's meet our guest, Jim Flynn, the chair of the Simsbury Free Library Board of Trustees, Hi. Tara Donahue Willerup, the vice chair, and Diane LeMay, who is a genealogy librarian for the Simsbury Free Library. Thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So let's get started with a quick history of the Sinsbury Free Library. And it's a rather extensive history because I went to the web website, so take it away, Jim. <laughs> it is, Althea, and uh, thanks again for having us here today. Um, the Sinsbury Free Library was uh, established as an institution in 1874. And that came about because of a man named Amos R. Eno, who was born and raised here in Simsbury. Um, was in the dry goods business in this area in Hartford, uh, eventually moved to New York City to pursue that uh, sort of business with a cousin. And uh, Amos R. Eno uh, bought a lot of property in New York City, okay. um, well north of the city, way out in the woods. He was uh, uh, the object of ridicule, I think, because of it. But those areas now are Times Square, Madison Square, that kind of thing. So oh, wow. Mr. Eno made a lot of money mm -hmm. uh, in the days before the income tax. Very successful man, but he never forgot his hometown. And he returned to Simsbury every summer. Uh, the Simsbury 1820 house is his summer house. He's buried in the cemetery. Uh, and uh, there are lots and lots of great things in Simsbury that uh, relate back to him and his family. One of the things he did in 1874 was to donate some money to 10 local people who became the trustees of uh, this foundation uh, that he established. The purpose of that was to create a so-called free library as distinguished from uh, subscription libraries, which were the rule at the time. Mm -hmm. So the local trustees bought some books, uh, the citizens used them, and uh, they operated out of a school until about 1890. And at that point, Mr. Eno donated the land and the building where we are now. Oh, okay. um, the free library, in effect, was the public library for Simsbury. Uh, if you go to places like Avon or even Philadelphia, the public library is known mm. as the free library. Yeah. Through the most part of the 20th century, uh, it was the, uh, the public library and still a private foundation. By the 1970s, though, the uh, financial demands uh, on the library was such that the town had to come in and assist the institution. And by 1984, uh, the town population had just outgrown our building. Mm -hmm. So the municipality took it over and established our beautiful public library, which is now down the street. At that point, the trustees uh, had a great building, mm -hmm. and they had a trust document that said it had to be used for a library. So they determined that the best use of the building would be for a a boutique research library, not a circulating library anymore, mm -hmm. but a library that would focus on genealogical and historical research. Okay. And that's pretty much uh, what the library has been. And really through the 90s, uh, it was almost exclusively that. In the last five or six years or so, we've tried to uh, open up what we do uh, well beyond just uh, genealogy. Okay. But it's still uh, a big part of what we do. Okay. Genealogy, it's a pretty big broad subject too. I mean, it certainly is. It's really hard to do the research. I tried finding somebody in my family and got lost. <laughs> well, we might be able to help you there. <laughs> so there, there's another part of the library, the William, I'm going to get his name right, William Phelps Eno yes. Memorial Center. Yes. And that's in the library. And I've been to the library. I did filmed a couple of things there. And it's very pretty. And could you tell us a little bit about that? Indeed. Uh, Amos R. Eno and uh, Lucy Phelps Eno, his wife, had nine children. Seven survived to adulthood. And uh, each one of them is a pretty interesting uh, story uh, on their own. Uh, William Phelps Eno um, is especially interesting. 
He is known as the father of traffic regulation and transportation engineering. Um, he, like his brothers and sisters, was really raised in New York City. Okay. And as a, a young kid growing up, 1870, 1880, the traffic situation in the city was total chaos. It was horses and buggies, but there were really no rules of the road, no anything. It was, uh, you know, uh, might makes right, that kind of thing. Okay. And this, this struck him even as a young boy. And all of his life, he was uh, uh, interested in rationalizing transportation systems, especially traffic flow. Mm -hmm. He went to Yale, he graduated, and went to work with his father in the real estate business, but always had this avocation of transportation uh, regulation. And by 1920 or so, he established his own foundation called the Eno Transportation Foundation, which still exists today. It's got a different name, I believe, the Eno Center for Transportation, down in Washington, D.C. Okay. And it's a, a nonpartisan think tank for the transportation industry. In any event, William Phelps Eno's main claim to fame, I think, is that he was the first one to ever get uh, a formal city ordinance with the rules of the road adopted. Uh, for whatever local political reasons, there was no uniformity, no agreement on how traffic should flow, either horse and buggy or the new automobile. Uh, William Phelps Eno put together a, a set a comprehensive a code, rules of the road. We have copies of it in the library and was able to convince the New York City Police Department to adopt that. Uh, prior to that, the police weren't even involved in, in, in traffic control. It was kind of a private matter. Um, <laughs> that then caught on in Washington and Detroit and other U.S. cities. And uh, kind of surprisingly, it really caught on in Europe. Oh. Um, so Eno is quite famous in London, Paris, Rome, uh, Berlin, where he consulted with the, uh, the uh, authorities and uh, transportation authorities in those countries and helped them design their road systems. He was a big believer in rotaries. I think the Arc de Triomphe, uh, Place de Concorde, Trafalgar Square, uh, limited access highways, the Autobahn. Um, so he, he contributed a lot. Um, and one interesting vignette is that <clears throat> after World War I, the French government actually awarded him uh, the Legion of Merit, very high honor, I'm sorry, the Legion of Honor, I believe it's called, mm. a, a, a high, high award, because they felt that by adopting his system of transportation, they were able to ferry troops and supplies to a city called Verdun, mm. where a very important battle took place, and because they were able to hold out, because in part of his transportation system, uh, they, uh, they felt very grateful to him for it. So a, a tremendously interesting guy in his own right. Fantastic. So if anybody wants to see where he used to work, they can just go right to our... I might add, he was a trustee desk. of our library, and he is buried across the street. There you go. All kinds of information what we're learning here. True. Tara, we've kind of been focusing on the history. Um, let's learn what's happening right now in the library. So when's the library open, and who can go um, there? Our regular hours are Tuesday and Thursday, 11 to 5. Okay. And on the second and fourth Saturday from 10 to 2, Diane is there doing genealogy and um, helping people with that. Um, people can come any, obviously, throughout that time period to do anything they need to do, okay. and um, we're happy to help them. We're trying to, we have genealogy, and um, we have a lot of local genealogy that, and, and regional genealogy that Diane will speak to, but mm -hmm. um, we also are trying to make it a real community center. We're trying to open our doors and let people come in and be comfortable there because it's a beautiful building and it mm -hmm. should be and it's a community building so it should be shared by everyone in the community. Um, we're doing movies. We have a book club. We have lecture series. We have Tom Ratcliffe is in, currently halfway through a lecture series of four lectures on the history of Connecticut oh. from the very very beginning of time to present day. Wow. So we're halfway through, and then we'll start. We'll have two more of those in the spring, and um, they're fascinating. And I think they've been taped, and they're actually on SCTV okay. right now. If people want to catch up with the two that we've already had, we also have um, a try. We're trying to do a series um, on Simsbury on Simsbury Free Library on Simsbury, and we do local aspects. We've had Jack Nino speak to the uh, the cemetery, mm -hmm. the history of the cemetery, and uh, Jay Willerup spoke on. My husband spoke on the High Blind Tower and um, did a great presentation for people who can't climb up there anymore. It was nice mm -hmm. to have it down here. 
Um, so we're, we are just trying to be open and available to anybody if they have any ideas or thoughts of things they want to do. We did tours of the, um, the Wadsworth house in, on Scarborough Street mm -hmm. and uh, the Chick Austin house there that's owned by the Wadsworth, and that was really well, well received. We had many people who wanted to participate in that. So we're just trying to do things that uh, fill a niche. You know, we have a lot of great organizations in town that do a lot of wonderful things, and we're trying to fill in where other things can be done. So we're trying to be available to that. Great. I mean, do you guys work with the Historical Society then too? We absolutely do. We um, right Today I was talking to um, someone from them there who were doing Connecticut History Day. We're trying to do that through the old state house. Right. And we have a teacher at the high school, Grantland Rogers, who's trying to put together a group of high school kids to participate in that this year. We had a group last year and we had a couple winners, so that was fun. And we do that with the Historical Society in partnership. We are currently working on the Martin Luther King uh, 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 Memorial, and we are working in partnership with the Historical Society on placing that and getting that all put together so we can have that in town. Um, so there are a lot of things where it's really nice to be able to work together with them and uh, fit, yeah. fill the Excuse me. In fact, the niche. last May, I think we uh, co-sponsored a, a bus tour of the Farmington uh, Canal okay. with the Historical Society and traveled down... Uh, uh, towards New Haven to see where the canal used to be. So it was a, a great day and a nice joint effort with the two organizations. Wow. I didn't realize there was just so much stuff going on around <laughs> here. <laughs> so all this stuff, all this information about um, things that are happening at the library, those are out on your website, right? Correct. And we are currently um, under construction. Under <laughs> construction. <laughs> We're currently um, creating a new website that hopefully will launch by the end of this week, quite frankly. Um, and so a lot of the stuff will be there and, and events and current events and photos of what we've done. We also um, have, a, you know, info at simsburyfreelibrary.org. Okay. Can, anyone can reach out to us and ask us questions. We're happy to tell them or send them information. Um, and we have a Facebook page. And we have a Facebook page. We're All on right. Facebook. We're on Facebook. So we try to be available. Okay, so it's just Facebook slash Simsbury Free Library? If you look up Simsbury Free Library, yes. I, I Google things. I don't, you know, okay. I, I never get it right, so I just Google and <laughs> cool. go to the site, so okay. it pops up. Okay. Um, do you have to be, you obviously don't have to be a member of the library, but what are some of the benefits of being a member of the library, and how did you become a member of the library? Um, the membership is very easy. It's a $30 membership, and we like to keep, have people keep in mind that it is basically helps preserve the building, mm -hmm. the structure, and the, also the, um, the community aspect of what we can do for the you know, mm -hmm. programs that we can do. Most of our programs are free, and as aspect and availability to all the books is, you know, please come in any time. Right. Um, as far as you can become a member online, you can email us. Mm -hmm. you, um, our website will have membership forms. It's $30 a year. One of the biggest benefits to becoming a member is um, one of our trustees, Mary Jane Springman, who is an incredible historian, mm -hmm. writes a quarterly every uh, quarter. Okay. And um, it's a historical, it's hugely uh, respected and interesting. It's got great uh, history of the local areas and the local people of the areas. Um, she does series. Sometimes she does three or four um, chapters in the story and mm -hmm. then other times she'll just have one story at a time and it's really it, that's right there is just a wonderful opportunity to get that in the mail and just pour over it for true historians it's really a, quite, a, quite a gift wow. yes, I did. thank you um, so okay so the <coughs> quarterly letter and um, just being a, just being a member being able to support the library it's some of the benefits yeah, that's uh, thirty dollars for a household, so kind of a nominal oh. uh, nominal charge. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Thank you, Diane. We're down to genealogy. <laughs> that's where you shine. Um, so, as a genealogy librarian, you provide assistance to individuals who are interested in researching their family history. Mm -hmm. Somebody that's just getting started, what would you would advise them to do? Um, well, they can make genealogy as difficult or as easy as they would like. It okay. it depends up on how much uh, they want to research. Mm -hmm. um, initially, we ask them to fill in a pedigree chart so that we can get an idea of where their people are from, uh, how much this, how much they know about their family mm -hmm. initially, so that it helps us in the long run to know where to look. It tells us the century, the state, 
Um, it gives us the background information and a, a starting point. Mm -hmm. We have uh, family genealogies and a lot of uh, Simsbury relative, uh, ancestors are, are written up already in these family genealogies. We have an Eno genealogy, we have Higley's, we have Cases, we have Phelps, Pettibone, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the initial families, founding fathers of Simsbury. Um, so that um, it's, if the book is, is already published, it's easy for those families. Mm -hmm. um, however, if the person is of a foreign country, um, we, we help them with their research in the States mm -hmm. before they can get over to the foreign country. Okay. Um, there's local records, the vital records is a good place to start. Birth records, marriage records, death records. Okay. Of course, cemeteries are, are readily available. Mm -hmm. um, and the federal census records. And these, these records are easy to start with. Um, if the ancestor was in the military, there's World War I records, World War II draft registrations, um, there's a wealth of records out there mm -hmm. besides records and photographs that the people may have at home, right. Bibles or just general family letters and things, right. uh, family journals. So um, we help them start at the beginning with what they know and we help them work backwards. We give them advice on research um, sources, mm -hmm. whether it's books or internet sites. Yeah. Um, there's some free internet sites. There's, we have access to Ancestry.com. Mm -hmm. That's another um, item that the membership goes for, is oh, to pay for the Ancestry.com library edition. So we can search on the internet mm -hmm. for family charts, um, census records, and a variety of things online. Great. And uh, it gets easier. After a few years, it gets easier. <laughs> it's not. It's a long-term hobby. Right. Yeah. Do you recommend people try and do, you know, I mean, because you obviously start out with you've got a mother and a father. Right. And then you've got your two sets of grandparents, and right. then it starts branching out. Right. It starts getting pretty large pretty quickly. Yes. Every generation, the people double. So it's one of you, two of two parents, four grandparents, eight great grandparents. So it gets very cumbersome. Um, do you recommend people like focus on like one little branch and then once they get that one kind of done, then they go on to the next one? Lines are never done. <laughs> <laughs> never done. You're always finding more people. Um, very often you'll run into a, what we call a brick wall where you find it very difficult to go beyond that, mm -hmm. whether it's uh, a f foreign uh, people coming into the country and marrying marrying here in the States, and you can't really go across the ocean because you don't know where they came from right. or when they came. Um, we we uh, kind of help them through and, and get them to different lines because uh, different lines, different family lines will bring them in different directions and and they'll always run into brick walls. Mm -hmm. So they need to branch out to um, doing their, their mother's line, their maternal line, as well as their paternal line. Okay. Yeah, I know that's kind of, I've, I've heard that my great grandmother was an American Indian. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to research that and I happened to be at, out there in uh, Utah. And I was like, oh, oh so I'll just go see. right to the library and see. And it was just so funny because they did have my, grand, my great grandfather crossing over from Canada into mm -hmm. the United States. But it, it was weird because his name was either Robert or Rock, and he would switch names up mm -hmm. crossing the border. And mm -hmm. it was like, you know, what was he up to? But mm -hmm. basically, he, was, he actually, from stories in the family, he actually was. Um, crossing the border illegally with my great-grandmother because she was an American Indian and he needed to protect her from the um, French were killing the Indians. 
So he was bringing her across into the United States to protect her, and they were going to go back and get her family. Mm -hmm. And when they went back, the family was gone. So that's the that's the story that's that the story. we've heard, but trying to get proof of that, any of that was just really difficult. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, you know, and that's kind of, because I know my mother's side of the family. Somebody else did all that genealogy. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we're always thankful for those people, aren't we? Yes, we are. Um, but then, you know, my father's <clears throat> side is like, well, there's, there's these rumors, and can we find any proof? And what was her name? You know, we have mm -hmm. a picture, and she's identified in the picture as Mrs. Rock. Mm hmm no first name, but I have a first name now because of some work that you've some, done. Some work that I've done. It, that's the funnest lines. thing. It's like people think it might be a dry. It's a dry thing, and it's kind of a. It seems kind of staid genealogy. It's not. It's fascinating, and everybody has these stories. If they go back far enough, there's some really incredible stories. Incredible that, stories that yeah. come through and the you, library. You just make, blow your mind. You make incredible finds, uh, yeah. being related to kings and queens or governors or. Um, I recently, after 30 plus years, I recently found that I was related to Sandra Day O'Connor. She's oh, wow. my father's third cousin. Wow. So that's kind of that's, interesting. Yeah. I'm, I'm very proud of that. Um, but yes, there's a lot of family stories. Some are true. Some, I, I have a family story where there was a Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in my grandfather's family. Well, my grandfather is the John. Mm -hmm. the, Matthew was two years older than he was. Luke was two years younger. And I have yet to found, find Mark after 30 oh. some odd years. I haven't found him in a cemetery. I haven't found him on a census. So, hmm. but there's the family story there. So I'll keep looking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll find him. <laughs> I'll find him. If he's there, you'll find him. <laughs> so, um, so one of the things that um, a lot of people think they have to actually physically go someplace, is that true? I mean, go to look in cemeteries and go to look in churches and go to look in... Uh, it's always fun to do that. Okay. Um, and if it's what I call cemetery weather, not New England winter, <laughs> um, it's always fun to hunt through cemeteries. But computers are making things a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Doing the research, uh, a lot of states are putting uh, vital records online, yeah. indexes to vital records. Uh, the national, the federal census is, is online on many sites. Um, computer software uh, relating to genealogy so that you can organize your data that you mm -hmm. accumulate, and it accumulates fast. Um, computer software uh, programs are wonderful now yeah. and they'll print out all the charts and all the the stories that you want to share with your family right. um, or if you have a family reunion it'll print out the, the charts for your family okay. um, and of course with all the photography sites and uh, the digital photographs it's mm -hmm. wonderful so yes, computers are making things easier. So you don't need to go to uh, town halls or, or the libraries, but what you find in books, you can't duplicate. And, um, and a lot of the books that are copyrighted are not on computers yet. So okay. you need to go to the libraries as Simsbury Free Library. Um, we, have, we have histories on towns in Connecticut. We have the Barber Collection, which is an index to vital records. Okay. Um, we have that in book. We also have that on film. Um, libraries you can't replace. Right. And, uh, and repositories and, and the town clerk's office okay. or cemeteries. So. All right. so I think you've answered my you next question. You can do a little was, bit of everything. Yeah, <laughs> which was could I find information about other places besides Simsbury at the Simsbury Free Library? Oh, and definitely. You just said definitely. definitely. Yeah. So that's great. Um, Sometimes I think people think it's a daunting task to look for this stuff. But Diane says, you know, just take little bits. Do it start, as steps Start local time. in Simsbury. Start, you know, here and just get a little bit, get your feet wet. Mm -hmm. And then go, then eventually plan the trip. So it's good. <laughs> great. Um, so uh, what, is there anything else that the Simsbury Free Library provides to its members and the general public? And I do want to mention that you mentioned that you can put these... Um, 
these charts on your computer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the Simsbury Free Library, if I remember correctly, and right on the website, it's Wi-Fi connected. Correct. So you can actually use your own computer there. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Anything else <laughs> that I might not have mentioned? We've got just a couple minutes left. I think our next, I don't know when this is filming, but our next, uh, we're going to have the, Simsbury Celebrates will have the gingerbread houses at Simsbury Free Library for, for anyone Christmas. who wants to just wander through and see. Yeah. So, well, and it's a the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Thing, yep. Yeah, when this may not be there, there yet, but everybody can. We just want it to be a community center, and we would really like anybody who wants to come down to just come visit, and we'd like anybody who has any ideas of things that they'd like to see us do there, we'd be happy to hear them and see if we could put it together for them. Fantastic. And any of their groups who want to come. Come, okay. So, and use it. Yeah, so basically just get in touch, um, and it's a genealogy and historical library, and it's got some interesting information about the Eno and the Phelps, and... Uh, we, Other should, <clears throat> we shouldn't forget the Ensign Bickford Corporation because we do have their uh, archives okay. in, in, our, in our building. Uh, and, of course, they've been in town for 175 years, I think. Correct. We celebrated their anniversary a couple of years ago. And um, it's fascinating for anybody who is interested in that particular company. But they also kept yearbooks and have lots and lots of photos. So oh. it's uh, an interesting uh, uh, view into the history of the town. Great. Yeah, and I was all excited when I was out at the great Crazy Horse Memorial, and I was like, Ensign Bigford, I was reading this. I'm oh, like, yeah. They're blast using the blasting stuff from, from Simsbury out here. And yeah, yeah, fascinating it's history. So, yeah. Yeah. so thank you. Um, I just knew it. We've run out of time. If you have any additional questions about the Simsbury Genealogical and Historical Research Library, also called the Simsbury Free Library, please visit their website, simsburyfreelibrary.org. It has lots of great information and is very well organized, complete with contact information. Thank you, Jim Flynn, Tara Donahue Willer, huh? yep, Donahue Willer, <laughs> and Diane LeMay for our informational tour of the Simsbury Free Library and its genealogical and historical treasures. Our director today is Karen Hanville. Our camera operators are Joe Gentry and Max Horton. Production support is provided by SCTV staff Karen Hanville, Phyllis Fishberg, and Jason Staples. The Sims Review is produced by Dominique Avery. I'm Althea Graney. Thank you for watching The Sims Review. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.